Hello everyone, this is Al Kabir, the analyst, and today I will be talking Kyrie Irving versus LeBron and explaining how this is bigger than basketball. And second, I'll be talking to young players in the NBA and how smart they are for asking for insurance. Right, this is Al Kabir, the analyst. So first and foremost, let me get in versus this Kyrie versus LeBron thing. Let me just take you down the brief history of the two. Back in 2015, Kyrie and LeBron came together. LeBron came back to the Cavs. They made the playoffs, and then they also made the finals. And this is when the up and coming Warriors got hot. So it was the Warriors versus the Cavs, of course. So um, the series went 4-2. Uh, LeBron averaged 36 points, about 14 rebounds, and nine assists. Um, they lost that finals. Kyrie got hurt with the kneecap season ending. I believe the Cavs would have won that finals if Kyrie would have stayed healthy. It was 4-2. It was just LeBron, really. He was playing. You know, I believe Kyrie saluted him, kept going and going, 4-2. 2016, both came back with a vengeance. War is still hot. I believe they just won 73 games and um, they just broke records of the most wins in the regular season. Warriors, they played OKC. They was down 3-1, came back against OKC, 1-4-3. Um, LeBron and the Cavs just waited for them in the finals. They finally match up, cash down 3-1, Cavs come back, win that finals. LeBron averaged 30 points, 11 rebounds, nine assists. Kyrie averaged 27 points, four rebounds, four assists. And that was enough to get him over the Warriors, they were so proud. LeBron came back, 1-1 one, one for a city. Kyrie just got his first frame. So they proud, they happy. Everything is good in Cavalier Town. Now, 2017, this is where it all goes downhill. Once again, I'm talking straight basketball. All goes downhill. They make the finals again against the Golden State, but this is a different Golden State Warriors team. Kevin Durant gets there. Kevin Durant is actually the one under pressure. Oh, you left for your guy, Russell Westbrook. You gotta go win this finals if you go join the Warriors. He went there, they tore up the Cavs. Like, they literally just tore up the Cavs. Um, Kyrie didn't respect LeBron because it seemed like LeBron gave up because they was overmatched. Um, Warriors won that one 4-1. LeBron was, felt like he was overmatched, which was true. You have four super, superstars, I guess really two because Kev, Kevin Love didn't really do anything. Um, so let me read the averages. All right, so LeBron averaged 33 points. 12 rebounds and 10 assists. This man was literally averaging a triple-double. Kyrie Irving averaged 29 points, four rebounds, four assists. And Kevin Love had 16, 11, and one. Which is, you'd think that'd be enough, uh, especially going against, you know, if it was that last year's Warrior team, but this is one with Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant alone, Averaged 35 points, five rebounds, one steal. You had Curry averaged 26 points. I'm sorry, 27 points, eight rebounds, nine assists. Then you had Clay Thompson with 16, four and two. And Draymond Green with 11, 10, and five. Um, they also had a better bench than the Cavs, but this was the point where, like I said, it went all downhill. And once again, this is strictly basketball right now. People, this is not 
the social justice movement that they try to fight for. So since then, people always had this thing, since that finals that they lost, had this thing where these two just don't like each other. Um, Kyrie requests a trade. LeBron didn't want the man to get traded, but he got traded to the Celtics. And then Kyrie realized his wrong mistake, called LeBron, heard they talk, they apologize. LeBron even wanted Kyrie to come to the Lakers. Remember that video that he put out with that comeback? So he wanted him to come back to the Lakers. I'm sorry, come to the Lakers. And, you know, they made that championship run again, which didn't happen, unfortunately. But it seemed like ever since that finals, they always put these two head to head. So now let me get to the point. All right. So news came out. Kyrie doesn't want to play because social justice. And they feel like also other players like Dwight Howard, Carmelo, you know, list goes on. 80 plus more players came out. They don't want to play due to the social injustice. Now, once again, I'm going to go relate back to the finals. Two men with the same common goal. At the time, it was the finals. One man felt like they did it different and they didn't like it, but they always had the common goal was to win. Now, this is the same situation, folks. Two men have one common goal, social injustice. One, one man feels like if we hold out, it will work, which I agree with. And one man feel like we go back, we have a bigger platform. We have reached out to millions on TV fighting for social injustice, which I sort of don't agree with. Uh, which is LeBron. Um, but yeah, so this is not this is not basketball. This is not two people going head to head. This is just two people that has different uh, different opinions. So I'm reading reports. LeBron should have been on that Zoom call. Why? He don't believe it should be done that way. But I believe the two should definitely talk. But he doesn't believe it should be done that way. That don't mean that's there. There's a problem. Kyrie believe we should hold out. Let's let's fight. Let's keep fighting and fighting and fighting what we was fighting for through this whole time. Because what happens is that people gonna sit back, just watch us play again, and forget about everything. Like yeah, we seen like as a salute to LeBron. We seen the I can't breathe shirt. We seen how he spoke out in the media um press. But when he does that, you know, basketball is still on and everybody's going about their regular day life. Now, if there's no entertainment on and we are still constantly talking about this, then they have to pay attention. It's not like, oh, they about to go out and play. So, so what? So what they was talking about me oh, at the pregame, we care about this, them playing basketball, them entertaining us. And that's why I'm on the side of Kyrie right now, which sounds crazy once again. It's weird theories, but I'm really on the side of Kyrie right now. But I'm gonna try to make it look like these two go head to head about this social justice thing. No, these two, these two had the same common goal, just two different ways, media. So stop it, stop it. Don't put these two men against each other, man. I believe these two men actually love each other. They just have two different ways of doing things, All right? So that's my stance on that. Two men, one common goal. That's the key to this. Two men, one common goal. Before, it was the finals. I believe they should have did it differently. Sadly, they broke up, but and this, once again, this is social injustice. This is way bigger than basketball. Folks, I'm telling you, this is way bigger than basketball. Two men, one common goal, just social justice. So, um, yeah, I hope they come together, two mega stars. I hope they make a choice. I hope everybody just come together and 
you know, figure out a way if they want to play basketball and, you know, support as much as they can, that's cool. If they want to hold out, that's cool as well. They break my heart, just me as a basketball fan, which is cool, even though I agree with Kyrie more. Um, yeah, I agree with Kyrie more, but hopefully they just come together. Great minds think alike, man. All right, second, man, let's get into the young players. Salute to the young players in the NBA, man. They are so smart. Oh, I believe I didn't talk about this in the last video about how Donovan Mitchell, he wanted to sit out due to big risk injuries. You haven't played for three months. Now you're telling us to come back and play full speed. So it's a possibility that something might get torn, something might get broke, and we might be out for the rest of the season. They want to make sure they come back. Salute to Jason Tatum, salute to Kyle Kuzma, and salute to uh, Donovan Mitchell again. They come back and the season and the injury happens. They want to make sure they are sure that is that is great, man. And that's what made me so mad about the NFL. This made me so mad because the NFL could have fought for the same thing when the new CBA rules was coming out. Um, I believe Shannon Sharp reported on it. All the players was worried about cutting camp time and smoking weed. Yeah, they they passed the smoking weed, but they gave y'all extra game, extra playoff game, and that's a high risk of getting hurt. Why not ask for unlimited insurance or unlimited um, uh, unlimited pension? That's neither here nor there, but this is NBA talk. So salute to them young players for demanding that because once again, y'all not about to run us. We get hurt up, oh, that's our money. Bad enough, y'all cut our money 25% and we're not even getting as much. Once again, as a LeBron or a Kyrie or Kevin Durant, they're not getting paid like mega stars. Not yet anyway. So, yeah, salute to y'all, man. Fight for the assurance, man. I'm sick of when players get hurt, all that's it. Like, really, man, they can't get paid. So get that assurance, just keep fighting. And um, just, just to wrap this up, LeBron and Kyrie, please come together. Now both fighting for social justice. Young players, keep sticking together. Keep fighting for that assurance. And um, this is Al Cabana Analyst, and I am Goose.